Hey everyone, and over the last 15 years or so, there's been some curiosity about my little Apache Eagle trailer that I rebuilt. And uh, I've had lots of questions, most on the internet, so I thought maybe I'd address some of those. So it is a 62 Eagle. It was rebuilt because these bed ends did not slide out very well. This track was attached to those and they were a double size and uh, they didn't slide right. This was bowed. It was only attached at the, to, at the ends, so the center of the track had bowed. I couldn't get it straightened out, and literally we were dragging the trailer sideways, trying to get them to slide. And uh, after a while I gave up. I, well, we couldn't get them uh, straightened out correctly, and they wouldn't slide correctly. And one of these tracks uh, at the front is actually uh, cracked right here which I could have probably taken it to someone to have that welded and, and repaired uh, had they slid, but, but I gave up and then I uh, set it aside for several months, maybe even close to a year, till I decided what I wanted to do with this. And, uh, and this is what resulted. Now it has gone through a few changes through the years, just a slight modifications, but the overall trailer itself has stayed the same. The canvas was custom made by Bear Creek Canvas. I sent them a dimension drawing. I uh, hand drew it on graph paper, sent it to them. They would not guarantee the fit and I said if you make it to my dimensions it will fit. Here we are uh, actually 16 years later and it still is holding up just fine. It fit perfectly and still fits real nice. So on the inside I took the original double side beds and cut them down to make these slightly smaller than single size beds. So they're interesting to sleep on because they're not real wide, but I don't tend to move around a lot. So it works for me. Um, this center piece that's blue was kind of an afterthought. That's just a piece of plywood with some foam on it and some leftover fabric from another Apache trailer uh, that I built. And uh, that's just to kind of fill in the center. What had happened without that piece in, when the trailer is closed, the canvas was sagging right in the middle between the beds. And I needed to put something in there so it didn't do that. And so this is what I came up with. Uh, you can actually sleep with that in there if you would want to, or you can take it out. This piece is the table and the table has two mountings. It can mount out here on the outside, right on this track. And it also can mount inside. I have a post for it. And up there you can see the recessed hole in the floor and then on the bottom. And uh, I have a post. You can mount this inside if you want a little table. Um, there's, it's not much space, obviously. But hey, you know, it'll do uh, to put a sandwich on or, or a little uh, snack or meal whatever you're doing, but obviously you're not going to serve Thanksgiving dinner off of it. I did put one cup holder in it. Um, I put a cup in there. Primarily, I actually use it for a little vase of flowers. Okay, so this is actually what you're seeing is the travel position for the beds and for everything else, actually. So this is the kitchen right here on the side. There's rollers on the bottom. There's six rollers uh, at each end and then also a set in the middle. It has fold down legs on it. So when you take it outside, you can fold down the legs and it actually just rolls up in there. I do not have to set up the trailer to take that kitchen in and out. There is a catch right back here and it's just a gate latch. So the, the post part is fastened to the bottom of the kitchen. And then the latch part is fastened here in the bottom of the trailer. I just keep this in it just so it doesn't pop open when I'm traveling. But this holds it because up under the front, the front slides up underneath. Uh, there's a lip at the front of the trailer. I put rubber bumpers there. It just slides right in up underneath there. For side to side, if you can see right up there, you can see a piece of angle mounted to the floor. So that's what holds it from shifting side to side. There's actually a piece of angle almost the whole length on the back side of this that you can't see right now uh, but that's what's there uh, so this like i said is the travel position there's room here in the center uh, if you want to put some gear in there or whatever i actually haul my uh, easy up in there the trailer does have a eight foot awning 
that I can put on here. Uh, I don't have it on right now. And, uh, but I also carry the easy up and it will slide right in there and uh, travel nicely. Over here on the left, this is a pretty vintage cooler. Uh, it is, uh, I don't use it as a cooler, but I just keep some dry goods and things in there. And then up front is just a plastic container. Now, you're probably wondering why is there a laundry tub up there? That is a laundry tub. And that is actually the shower. So there is a shower in here. Uh, so if you can imagine standing in a laundry tub to take a shower, that's what it is. Um, there's a post that I set up with a ring around it and I put a shower curtain around there and there's a handheld shower up there and you can take your shower. Uh, this is just a few other um, items here, water hose, power cord, and some other uh, camping things in there as well. On top of each of the fenders, there's a little bit of storage up beside the laundry tub, way in the front to the left of it, as we're looking at it this way. There's some storage and on top of the fender over here. In front of the fender on the right hand side, is actually a power converter. So it does have a power converter in it. And uh, so I can run 110 or 12 volts. All the lighting of course is 12 volts in here. I don't have the trailer plugged in right now. Uh, but there are two outlets inside and there's uh, covers built over the fenders. You can just catch the end of the one outlet there. I do have GFI outlets in it. That little brown box is a ceramic heater and uh, I've been out in some cold weather. Uh, not real, real cold, but down into the 20s and it has kept it really toasty warm. Uh, because it's such a small area, I guess, uh, it does heat it up very nice. We'll take a quick walk around the outside. Uh, to show you here the door inside of the door so i have a light on there and the handle is for the stabilizer jacks and the hammer i just use that to uh, pound the stakes in for the canopy got a little flashlight clipped in there and there is a stereo built in um, of course i finished the trailer in 2004 roughly um, so the stereo is a little older than that so you can imagine there's no Bluetooth or anything like that in the stereo. But hey, it does have that cool little remote. So on the outside, I did keep the original Apache badge. Those are the original tail lights. What's not original is the backup lights. I added those uh, because sometimes I get to a campground at night. It just helps with backing in. I don't have a battery on here either, and without it being plugged in, I can't show you the lights, but so there's a bank of switches over here, right in that little spot. Two of those switches, these two center ones, you see, have different positions. So center, when both of those is off, up is so that the reverse lights work when I put my tow vehicle in reverse, and down is for when I just want to turn on the... Uh, backup lights when I'm camping just to have some exterior lighting. Okay, top switch is to turn the power to the radio on and off uh, because I don't want it to drain my battery. So the top will just turn the power to the radio on and off. Uh, no need in trying to save preset stations or anything like that in a radio that age. Right around the corner here, you're going to see I have one 12 volt outlet. Uh, had I been doing it like, in, uh, you know, around this time, I might have put more than one in, and I can always add one. Pretty easy to do. Okay, let's finish going around the outside. So, like I said, I kept the original Apache badging, and I have my little built not bought sticker there. On the back, see these rings? There's one on each corner in the back. I, I, there's holes there already, and I just kind of conveniently use those and um, I take my dog with me I can attach the dog there. Now originally this bike rack was not on the back. Um, this was uh, built to just to carry one bike. There's one bike rack on the front that's been there since I built it but I had to add this one uh, because um, I started taking somebody else with me so of course I had to add a bike rack and this is what I came up with. So originally this was the original step. Now, in case you're wondering, there, there is a whole new frame under this. This is a custom two by three inch 
box steel frame. Uh, much, much heavier than the original. Uh, the trailer axle is from an 85 Ramada. I put a 3,500 pound under that trailer and I took this 2,000 pound axle and put it under here. Those little fenders, I bent those out of the leftover material from the beds when I cut them down. So that was actually the bottom of the bed. Um, so anyhow, that's that's the story on the frame and the, and the running gear. Uh, but let's get back over here to the step. So this is a step. This is actually a running board from an 87 Chevy S10 truck. Uh, my son had bought it as his first vehicle. He decided he didn't want those running boards, took them off. I said, hey, that looks like a step for on the back of my Apache. So that's what it was. So originally, this was just it. Then when I wanted to carry another bike, I had to come up with a way to do it. So I didn't want to weld to the original frame. So what I had was I had an old bike rack, and that's what this is from. And this piece is like a U-shape. And so it's bolted up here to the bumper and then comes out and then this bike rack is on it. Then I took another piece of the uh, step and just extended it out over because the wheel only has to sit at each end so the step can be in the middle between the wheels of the bike and the eye bolts are just to tie the straps on to hold the bike. So I need to have a way to haul a bike without having a post in the middle because I need to access the inside of the trailer. Okay. Um, now here we have the radio antenna. That was actually just installed last year, believe it or not. I had a small antenna that was on the inside of the trailer. I had set it up each time. And I just happened upon an old travel trailer that I tore down to make a flatbed out of. And uh, this was the antenna from that old travel trailer, so it worked out quite well. So on the outside over here, this is a propane outlet. And I just switched this. Uh, so that's, that was new here a couple weeks ago. I had a different style propane outlet, and what I found was it didn't match anything. So my uh, my stove could not plug into just any uh, other travel trailer, and I wanted it to do that because I do go camping with other people, and sometimes they're next door or whatever, and um, we wanted to be able to, uh, so if you hear that breathing, that's, that's my dog. <laughs> She just came up here beside me. She wants a little, little petting. All right. Um, so anyhow, that's the story on that. And so now I have a, a quick connect propane fitting that will fit other uh, travel trailers, um, motorhomes, whatever. And, um, and since I did get a motorhome, just a small one, to tow this behind, now I can plug my Apache stove into my motorhome. Okay. Uh, so these normally are put on travel trailers. They're quite heavy, but what I found with this is I can actually just lift the whole trailer because of the lightweight. So when I get to a site and want to level, I don't have to put blocks or anything like that under the wheels. I just back her in and I just jack these down and I just lift the back end. And in fact, you can see right now, this is off the ground. So uh, not by much, but by a little bit. All right. Now you might've noticed there is a water spigot here. I put that in originally. Uh, I haven't used it a whole lot, but there is a water inlet for city water. This, there's a hose that attaches to that, goes over to the sink that's in the kitchen. Uh, and that way you can spray off your dishes or run some water there if you want to. And then of course we have an outside outlet right here. Um, had a, when I originally built a trailer, this gas connection was not on this side it was actually on the other side and I found that a lot of campsites that was inconvenient with the way the campsites were set up so I switched it the gas line runs down the center of the trailer so it's pretty easy just to flip it over to this side um, so now it actually is under that outlet which I didn't care for but uh, I don't really use that outlet a lot anyway okay let's go up here so up here we have two connections, and one says city water, and one says pump inlet, and then there's the wastewater drain. That wastewater drain comes from the uh, shower inside. And then this is the electric connection, so you just can use an extension cord and plug that right in there. 
Okay. Um, so the pump inlet, there is a water pump in there. And so there's no holding tank on the trailer. I have a seven gallon portable tank. I have a short hose with a piece of uh, rigid pipe on it. I just stick that down in the tank and then hook it on here, turn on the pump and it'll pump water straight out of that tank. Tank runs empty. I can just take it and go get it filled somewhere. Of course, if there is city water, I can hook it up right there. The other reason I did this like this, my intention always was to get a tankless water heater to hook on this so you could have hot water. Uh, never bought one, but you know, if you want, you could run a tankless uh, water heater through here. Just set your heating on the tankless so that it doesn't scold you, and you can just run that. Okay, so up front, this is the bike rack uh, that's been here from the start. Spare tire. Um, my cover is getting a bit cracked and old. Uh, if you sat out in the sun for 15 years like it has, you might be cracked and old too. Uh, so this is a battery, battery disconnect switch. And I have a smaller 11 pound propane tank on there right now. I can put a 20 pound on. The holder's made for a 20. Um, I just found I don't need the 20. And I was carrying this 11 pound separate. Found it sits in the carrier just right. I just use a strap to hold it in. And of course, there's the regulator. Believe it or not, that's the second regulator I had on this trailer. First one actually went bad. So the frame was custom made by a guy named Ron, and he retired as a welder. And when he did, he started making little utility trailers, sitting them out in his yard and selling them. And I would go by him quite often and thought, boy, that guy makes nice little trailers. I even looked at one and uh, never bought a utility trailer from him. But when I was ready for this, I drew up the plans for the frame and I stopped in and talked to the man and he looked at the plans and he said, yeah, he said, I think I can weld that up for you. So he welded it up and painted it and uh, he asked what size ball coupler, I told him two inch. And, uh, and so one of the interesting things is I did not specify the coupler, I just told him two inch ball. That's all well and good. Now, what you might find interesting on this, oops, got from this side. So you see how small the trailer is. However, buddy, we can about move a house with that coupler. She's rated for 8,000 pounds. So I think we're good to go on that coupler for a long time. All right. So the bike, when you set the bike on here, uh, of course, you just set it right on the rail. There's a strap that straps on the here, on top of the bike rail, and then one down on here. This is slightly inconvenient, uh, just because you have to connect to your vehicle first, and then you have to put a strap from here up to the bike. But I have uh, I've cut special little straps just for that purpose, so it doesn't take long to do. All right, then here on the side, got a old ammo box I painted up and mounted and that just carries some blocks uh, some of the blocks I might use under the stabilizers when I'm camping but primarily those blocks believe it or not are to level the kitchen because um, the kitchen has folding legs and uh, sometimes the terrain isn't exactly level when you're camping all right so that's kind of the tour of the, the trailer the way it sits course whenever you're gonna camp you can pull out the kitchen and take the table out mount it wherever you like um, I do have a fan that actually clips up there and right over here there's a little electric snap together connection for it a little 12 volt fan and a light that will clip onto the top rail I don't have that in here I should have put that in to show you uh, anyhow that's about it and just thought I would share this since I've never actually made a, a video of this before. All right, thanks for watching.